What's going on guys? Welcome back to my channel. Hope you're having a great weekend. A couple weeks ago, someone commented on one of my MX650 videos asking if I have a video showing how to wire up a headlight to one of these bikes. Uh, it should be the same process for like MX500, SX500 and whatnot. So today I'm gonna be doing just that. So for the headlight, what I'm using is an LED light bar by Nylite. I've used the same brand for our Subaru Crosstrek pod lights on the hood. Um, for And I've had that for over a year now, so I definitely trust the brand. It's been holding up well. And some brackets. This is actually a pair. It's supposed to be six and a half inches wide. Housing's metal. It's got six individual LED diodes. Uh, the color temperature is supposed to be 6,000, so bright white. Exactly what I'm looking for. Pretty simple bracket design. The Allen bolts just go to the back and then it swivels how you want it. The switch that I'm going to be using is just a standard 7 8 inch light switch I got on Amazon. Uh, this is a pretty commonly used one for pit bikes. I'm going to install this right beside the left uh, grip since the right one has the ignition and stuff already. As far as which wire goes to which, it really doesn't matter since this switch essentially just completes a circuit when you turn it on. I also got a pack of these inline fuses. It's not really needed, but I just want to play it safe. I'm just going to be adding one of these inline fuses uh, to the power source that I'm tapping in from. Just in case anything goes wrong, I just want to play it safe and not damage anything else. I'd rather blow a fuse than damage uh, one of these lights or the controller, for example, on my razor. Another thing that I got for this setup is a voltage step-down converter or reducer. Since my bike is modified for 48 volts, uh, and technically these uh, light bars are designed for 12 volt systems. I have read of someone using one of these on a 36 volt, you know, like a stock MX uh, setup, but I'd rather not burn it out and I want it to last a while. So I got one of those. I will be showing you how to install it and wire it later in this video since it has not been delivered yet. For now, let's get started installing everything else. Today I'm actually gonna use this factory bolt to secure the bracket dead center and then run the wire through this hole and then we're going to mount it mount the light onto the bracket i'm going to replace the standard washer with a larger one just to have more surface area to cover the bracket so it doesn't just slip through the hole the wiring through the hole ahead of time, make it easier later. Oof, that's exactly where I want it. All right, so I just discovered something super frustrating with this bracket system though. Uh, you have to slip a nut into this hole first and hold it in place somehow, and then stick the Allen bolt through from the outside, screw it in, and sandwich this bracket. So I had to get really creative, and uh, I stuck a magnet to a flathead screwdriver, and then I'm just gonna feed this in there, since there's not enough room for a wrench, um, and then I'm gonna screw the Allen bolt through from the side while I'm hovering the nut in place with a magnet. Hope this works. So this is essentially what I had to do was just hover the nut in place and slip the, the Allen bolt through and hope it catches. And when it does, you can simply just tighten it from the outside since the nut is the same diameter as 
the bracket. Then you can swivel it in place how you want it and then start tightening the bolts on the side. You don't want to point it too high since it might blind people ahead of you. But you just want it to light up the road surface. Now let's install the switch. For this, you, all you need is a skinny Phillips screwdriver. We're going to take this bracket off, mount it on, and reinstall this from the back. This is what it looks like from the driver's seat. Now it looks well balanced. That on the left, and then I got the voltmeter and the ignition on the right. Looking good. With the headlight mounted and the switch mounted, it's now time to start taking all the plastics off so we can get started with the wiring. With all the plastic covers removed, you can now see how my electrical system is. This is that fourth battery I added in order to upgrade my Razer to a 48 volt uh, since I upgraded the controller a couple weeks ago. So this is the positive terminal from the fourth battery and the negative terminal from the first battery. I know for a fact it gets 48 volts, actually like 52 um, here. So I'm gonna be tapping into these two wires uh, to get a second set of wires going to the voltage step-down converter or reducer. And then from that converter, I'm gonna be powering the lighting. All right, so the voltage reducer just came in. So let's go wrap up this install. A little larger than what I was expecting. It's about four inches wide without the brackets. With the brackets, it's like five inches wide. So we're gonna have to figure out where we're gonna jam this thing. It's about an inch and a half. Thick. I don't have a connector to go with this, so we're going to end up snipping this and stripping the wires. Uh, it looks like the red wire is going to be the 48 volts coming in. The yellow wire is going to be the 12 volts going out. So that's what's actually going to go to the headlight. And then the black, it's just a ground. This thing supposedly reduces 48, 60, and 72 volts all to 12 volts. So this is gonna work even if I do uh, upgrade my controller and my motor, my whole setup to 72 volts later on. Uh, I'm not gonna have to change anything with this. I think the most ideal place for this to be is right on top of the third battery, just so I could wire everything up on this corner and put all the covers back on. All right, so it might look a little confusing, but I promise you it's relatively simple. There's only three wires that go to the uh, voltage converter. The yellow wire is what's supplying power going to the LED light. The ground is just teed into the negative battery terminal um, from the fourth battery, which is the negative to the controller anyway. Should be easy to figure that out. Uh, the red wire, is teed off of the positive terminal in the fourth battery and then i have an inline fuse in place and um, to break that connection is the switch so when it's turned off that has no it doesn't circulate i want to make sure that it doesn't draw any power whenever the switch is off um, and then the led ground is t also teed off of 
the same black wire um, going to the converter. So that's pretty much it. So let's let's plug this up, put the fuse in, and hopefully it doesn't catch on fire. Another thing you want to keep in mind if you are planning on doing something like this is make sure that there's enough slack on the wiring for the fork to turn left and right. Put a 10 amp fuse in. Right. Now that everything's plugged in and we know it's working, it's time to put everything back together. All right, just to give you guys an idea of how freaking bright this thing is. It is bright. So freaking bright. Well, that was quite a bit of work, but I promise you it's worth it. It is so freaking bright. And this whole setup cost me less than 50 bucks. And now I can ride at night. So it's definitely worth it. So if you found this information useful in any way, do me a favor and hit that like button. And if you like this kind of content, want to keep up with my MX650 build or some of my other projects, consider subscribing to my channel. But this is going to be it for today. Thank you for watching.